Hi Chelsea fans, welcome to the channel. I'm Chelsea Staffed, the home of the transfer news and Chelsea transfer updates and just Chelsea news updates on pretty much a daily basis or when possible. And today's very, very different because I'm looking at doing a little mini series again. Three part mini series today, tomorrow and Friday as we look to build the beginning of the Premier League season. First today we're going to talk about the squad. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the strongest 11 and on Friday we're going to talk about the Premier League preview and our expectations where we're trying to be a little bit realistic taking everything into account. So today different video talking about the Chelsea squad with a question for you guys and that question is just how strong do you think this Chelsea squad this year is? Let's get cracking. But if you look at how we finished the season with the FA Cup final and the, the, the team, the squad, we all knew that there was holes. We all knew that, that there was room for improvement. We all knew that Frank and the board had to go out and, and, and sort of, you know, try to rejuvenate the team and the squad with, with some signings in key areas. And as I say, we've done it. And... It's unreal when you think about the squad and exactly how strong we are. You look at Chelsea now and you just think two players for every position, three goalkeepers, including the incoming Edouard Mendy from Wren, and we're actually quite set. And when you sit back and go through each position and the options we're going to have available based on the players that we think are going to stay here, it is impressive. I have to say the work has been done and it's, it's unreal. So, goalkeepers, we're going to start with, obviously, Kepa and Willy Caballero, we know, are there already. Eduard Mendy is going to come in. So, those three will obviously battle for first-team places. Kepa is under huge pressure, and Eduard Mendy will come in for a fee of around 25 million. And when he comes in, you'd imagine that, that it's pretty much level playing field between Kepa Caballero and Mendy. Whoever trains the best or whoever impresses in training, if they get into the team and they impress in the first team and play well, as Frank Lampard has said himself, they're going to stay in the team. So the sign of Mendy, six foot six Senegalese goalkeeper, 28 year old goalkeeper, coming in is going to push Kepa that bit further to try and up his game. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Kepa. Willy Caballero and Eduard Mendy is a much better scenario than what we had last year. So we can all pretty much say that a right back we're set. Cesar Azpilicueta, Rhys James, got to battle it out. Rhys James did excellently well last year, made that position his own. If anything, forced Aspi across to left back, where we all know Emerson Palmieri, who won't be here next season, and Marcus Alonso were trying to battle for that position and end up losing out to Aspi. Emerson's going to go, and we all knew that we needed a left back. And Chelsea's gone out there, and we kept hearing and kept reading. Ben Chilwell was the number one target. And then you're talking about Leicester and, and Brendan Rodgers saying not going to let him go. We got that deal done. So Ben Chilwell comes in and immediately looks better. Looks much better at left back with him, him and Alonso. Batting it out for that start with Chilwell expected to be the number one. Forcing Alonso to up his game, especially defensively. But Alonso probably will still get his chances now and again when we revert to a back three. So the issue we had at left back has been solved. A lot of people are still saying Drury's out as far as Ben Chilwell's concerned. But for me, it's an improvement on Emerson Palmieri and Alonso defensively. So Chilwell will be the number one. We've solved that particular issue. So right back we're set, left back we're set. In the middle of the back four, the centre backs is where there was a problem. And I say there was a problem because beginning of last season, if you've seen my videos, I'm going to repeat myself, apologies. If you, beginning of last season, we would have said Rudiger and Christensen were the main two, the, the number one starters. By the time the season finished, we're probably saying to Maury, whatever happened to him, and then we all know he's going to go out and loan to Everton. But something happened to him last season, which we don't know, but something happened and he was out the side. But when you finish the season, you're saying that Zuma and Tomori were the better two because they played beginning of the season, had a great combination, and it was good and they, they did well, they impressed. As I say, something happened. But then you get to the amount of goals that we've conceded, 
and the stupid mistakes we're making, being a bit naive, there was no leadership. We just were lacking in that area. And Chelsea have gone out and got Thiago Silva on a free transfer. And that's an unbelievable signing. So straight away, you're looking for improvement. You're now going to say Thiago Silva plus one. Whereas you had the four battling for two positions, you've now got three battling for one, which makes them all up their game defensively and their levels in training to get in and play next to Thiago Silva. General consensus among everyone is that Kurt Zuma will start next to Silva, which is just reward because Zuma played well last year. You have to give him some credit. I still think that tomorrow he's up there ahead of Rudiger and Christensen, but he's going. He's going to Everton. So I don't understand it, but he's going anyway. So have we improved our back four? We need a centre back, we need a left back. We've gone out and got Chilwell and Thiago Silva. Outstanding. So if you think about like a back four, for example, you're saying Chilwell, Silva, Zuma, Aspilicueta. Look at the backups. Alonso, Rudiger, Christensen, Rhys James. Strong. Into our midfield now. The midfield, the central midfield area. And with Nagolo Conte hopefully being fit, Ruben Loftus Cheek being fit and no injury problems this season, those two are already a bonus. Matteo Kovacic was arguably the biggest bonus in that midfield position with his performances last season, voted as player of the season, and rightly so. Then you've got Ross Barkley on the peripheral and could go before the end of the transfer window. Billy Gilmore, obviously recovering from his operation. He's away from the first team. He might come and feature in a few cup games, but he's one for the future. Then you've got Jorginho. Jorginho, unsure what's going to happen with him, if he's going to go back to Italy, if he's going to be sold. It's, it's still up in the air at the moment, but Jorginho's in there. Then you've also got Mason Mount. And we know how flexible Mason Mount is. He can play in the middle midfield. He can play high and wide. He can play as a number 10. And of course, you've now got Kai Havertz involved as well. So you're looking at our midfield. Straight away, you're saying Kai Havertz is a marked improvement. On Ross Barkley, for example, Mason Mount's there. Those two to battle for a position either deep in midfield or number 10s. That's 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 going to happen, and people need to get used to that. Mid midfield two, hopefully Kovacic and Conte. And then you've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek still around. You've also got Jorginho still around. So options we've got in the middle of midfield to play a two or a three are stronger than what they were last year. Hopefully, as I say, with the inclusion of Loftus-Cheek and N'Golo Conte. So again, we're stronger and we've got backup if we need them. Look at the attacking options we've got in the Chelsea squad now. There was a, an argument, a lack of goals. Obviously, we conceded a lot of goals, but a lack of goals and creativity. Once Christian Pulisic was out injured, we really missed him. Prove it when he come back in was outstanding. And you then add Hakim Ziyech to that, the creator, that wand of a left foot that he's got. Then you look at Timo Werner, who's going to be looking to, to get in behind with his pace, with his goal-scoring ability. As I say, Pulisic. Then you've got Callum hudson Doy. You've got Mason Mount and Kai Havertz supporting as number 10s if required, along with Tammy Abraham and Olivier Giroud up front. And the possibilities for Frank Lampard are endless. They really, really are. Such an exciting time, such an exciting squad. And by all accounts, the signings are still not over with more and more reports that Declan Rice is the final piece of the jigsaw. Yes, we have to wait and see. The window's open until the 5th of October. We'll give it a few weeks and see what happens. We are looking so strong as a squad this season and it's exciting to see what we can achieve. So make sure you stay tuned tomorrow where we try to piece together the strongest possible 11 for Chelsea for the most part of the season this coming season. As I say, exciting signings, exciting squad, exciting season. Thank you so much for watching part one of this mini series. Smash the like button for me, then subscribe to the channel, but hit the bell for notifications to make sure you're notified when my videos come out, which is pretty much daily. There might be the odd day or two where a video doesn't appear for whatever reason, but most days. Thank you for your support, guys. Post your comments, comment section below. See you all tomorrow.